in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to Church at Home and to Advent Sunday. Advent is a season of penitence and hope. A time to prepare our hearts and our lives to meet the coming Christ. This will be an Advent season like none other. As we worship together, let us join our prayers with all who hope, pray and work for a better world. And let us pray for the grace to be fully alive to God as people of light and hope in the world. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew in us faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city in Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts at Christmas. Be king of our lives today. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility. But on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Isaiah, verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles bushwood and the fire causes wood to boil, to make your name known to your advisories, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that, you, that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you. Who works for those who wait for him, you meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteousness deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inquieties, like the wind, takes us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our inquiety. Yet, O oh Lord, you are the Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember in quietly forever. Now consider, we are all your people.
God, I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. Hallelujah. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his way straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth, to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. This is Advent Sunday the beginning of a new Christian year. As time rolls by, is the world reaching its sell-by date? Of course not, said the disciples. Look at that temple over there, those stones. That's quality, craftsmanship that will last. Do you know what, said Jesus? It's all going to smash, and sooner than you think. And it did. But the world's sell-by date is not sometime in the future, said Jesus. It's always now. Everything is always on the edge. Mark chapter 13, verse 28. Learn the parable of the fig tree. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. Well, that doesn't sound like much of a parable. There was a fig tree, yes, and? Well, it was a fig tree. Well, what did it do? Well, it did what fig trees do. Go figure. The world is full of drama, now as then. Wars, rumours, news, fake news, famines, pandemics, temples smashed up. Happens all the time. That's history. Truly, says Jesus, it's all happening now. You people standing around me now are all experiencing God's moments. How dramatic you think they are is up to you, but just open your eyes. People are longing to know when, but I can't give you some date in the future. Look around with fresh eyes and you'll see it all. Learn from that fig tree over there. All right, let's study the fig tree. The common fig, Ficus carica, has been cultivated for thousands of years. Grows two to five meters tall, spreads to an equal or greater distance. Its deeply lobed leaves grow on thick stubby twigs, trunks and branches covered with pearl-grey bark. 
Most ripe figs are white, brown or purple, not green. Fig trees produce two crops a year, early summer from the buds on the previous season's growth, another late summer, sometimes a smaller third crop on the late summer branches. Figs fruit for about 50 years. A five meter fig tree yields roughly 20 kilos a year. Thank you, Wikipedia, but anything else to say about figs? Jesus was talking to first century Jews. Figs were one of the seven fruits of the promised land, a sign of God's plenty and blessing. One prophet said, when the Messiah comes, everyone will have their own fig tree and sit under it. The great rabbi said, the law is a fig full of goodness, because every other fruit had a part that was inedible pips or a stone. The fig was pure. It was better. You could eat it all, but only if it was ripe. You have to know when or you get a serious tummy ache. Some great rabbis believed the fig tree was the first one in the Bible where all the trouble began, back in the Garden of Eden. The knowledge of good and evil, that tree wasn't an apple, they reckoned. It was a fig. So for those great rabbis, the fig became a sign of lost innocence, of judgment. Oh, judgment. I've been rereading Albert Camus' great novel from 1947, The Plague. In this May's London Review of Books, the philosopher Jacqueline Rose summarised its plot like this. The pestilence is as once a blight and a revelation. It brings the hidden truth of a corrupt world to the surface. Judgment is revelation that shows up how precarious the things we took for granted actually were. That's why we look at the fig tree. The fruit is rich and sweet and glorious, but at the wrong time, it's a curse. And Jesus says, you know how to grow figs. Why can't you grow up? Why is there so much frustration, longing, desperation and sadness in your promised land? You have more wealth, leisure, power, knowledge than ever. So why are so many of you so miserable all the time? Can't you see what's really going on? Nothing is safe as houses. Temples are not safe as houses, let alone houses. The parable of the fig tree says, stop taking life for granted. Connect fully to life, its reality and its processes, and then it will yield its wisdom, sweetness and delight. Don't live on the surface. Faith is not dropping out or nodding off, but waking up. All things must pass, and you must learn from life's seasons. Acknowledge its joy and sweetness, but also its rottenness, its blight for what they are. If everything around us is breaking up, hold below the waterline. What sort of people do you have to be? Following Jesus begins with seeing things differently. This week with Church at Home, we've got information about a course called Discovering Prayer. There are a lot of other good resources out there as well to refresh the way we see things and the way we pray. The key is to open our eyes and ears to reality, to be sensitive and aware about everything. I know a French monk who is a teacher. A few years ago, a government inspector came round his school to check up on the seven-year-old science knowledge. What do you get when snow melts? He asked. Up shot 21 out of 22 hands. They all shouted out, water. The only hand not to go up belonged to the Catholic boy at the back, an altar server. He had his own answer. What do you get when snow melts? Not water, but spring. At this turning point of the year, we need to learn the lesson of the fig tree. Wake up, open our eyes and reset. Not for a bailout, but a reboot of our whole way of life. Jesus says, in his society, there is a new way to live. You show wisdom by trusting people. You handle leadership by serving. You handle offenders by forgiving. You handle money by sharing. You handle enemies by loving. And you handle violence by suffering. Because this is a Jesus society. And you repent, not by feeling bad, but by thinking different.
Together, in courage and hope, let us profess the faith that sustains us in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Lord, as we come before you today on this first Sunday of Advent, we ask you to prepare us for your coming. You promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith, and we bring before you today the needs of the church and the world. Everlasting God, we pray for your church today, gathering virtually all around the world in houses, tiny churches and great cathedrals to praise you and to hear your holy word. Give us a sense of expectation as we come and inspiration as we go. Help us to put our differences behind us and to unite instead behind the great commission of Jesus to make disciples of all nations and all people. We pray for your blessing on all those who preach and teach the message of your salvation. And we pray especially for our ministers in the Oxford Diocese as they seek to do your will and guide us through our spiritual and worldly journeys. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, drive away despair from our politics. Revive our dreams of justice and truth. Restore our passion for what is good and right. Establish your just and gentle rule in areas of the world where there is conflict and where peace has been powerless and violent people have had their day. We ask you to govern the hearts and minds of those who lead our nations and for those in authority, that they may act justly with honesty and integrity according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving God, in our daily life, help us never to forget the supremacy of love. May love motivate our care for our neighbourhoods. May love heal the social ills which sometimes drag us into despair. May love inspire our citizenship to rise beyond mediocrity. And may we always remember that we are members one of another and that we can never live to ourselves alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, on this day we pray for the homeless, the refugees, the expelled and the forgotten people everywhere. And we remember especially today all those involved with the work of crisis and shelter as they seek to make a difference for the men and women they serve. May they know that your guiding hand is with them in their daily work and tireless endeavours. We ask you to help us all to use our gifts and our talents to the greater good of all. Challenge us to drive away complacency and apathy when we know in our hearts that we could do more to help and sustain those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, we pray for others for whom this day will be seem long and hard. For those in hospital or ill at home, those struggling with despair or depression, those seeking work, and for those whom this day will be their last. Comfort and heal all who suffer. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. 
We remember before you those who have already gone before us. We light a candle to symbolize the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings hope. We turn our darkness into light. In your light shall we see light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we leave this place today, Advent Lord, come ever nearer. Come to rejuvenate our faith. Come to fortify our social conscience. Come to widen our eyes with wonder, so that when the Saviour comes, he may steal into our hearts and find them ready. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. 
And so we join our voices with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Lord our God. Make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hello, I'm Michelle Eyre from Discovering Prayer, and I'm here to talk to you about how you can have greater peace this Christmas. It's been such a challenging time for us all. We're spending a lot more time alone and we're really missing our loved ones. And that's why at Discovering Prayer, we have created an online Advent calendar so that you can pray every day in Advent. You can sign up for free completely free and you'll receive a new audio prayer time so you can listen and pray every day through Advent. We'll also send you an email each day with an inspirational Bible verse so you can carry it around with you and keep your focus on God. Discovering Prayer has worked with thousands of people, in fact 51,000 people have joined us in prayer online. And I really believe that when there's a community of us praying together, God somehow blesses all of us. And it's that blessing that he longs to give you this Christmas. So give it a whirl, sign up for free, and I'll look forward to praying with you this Christmas and Advent.